I am in Kisar. I am from Labrus. I am 65 years old. My son was killed by a soldier 10 years ago. We suffered so much during the occupation. They would keep trying to evict us from our homes. My husband is handicapped. What can we do if we are made to leave the house in the middle of the night? My other sons would be arrested every now and then. My son, Omar, the one we killed, looking at his face one more time to touch his cheek and to kiss his hand before I bury him. But they won't return the bodies of our sons. We women, we formed an organization to demand that they return the bodies of our sons. In the beginning, they ignored us. beginning to return some bodies. Do you know, for four years my heart was so full of grief, I could not sleep. And one night, I don't know why, I, I started writing a poem to express everything that I was feeling. From that day on, I kept on writing. Now, whenever we have a ceremony, the people call me this old mother, and I perform my poems for all our people, because my poems are poems of sorrow, they are poems of strength, they are poems of resistance. Welcome, welcome. Please, please. I am Mr. Fateh Adil. I am the director of this National Art Gallery. This is my team. We are very proud of how we preserve this art gallery. You could say we practice the art of deception in order to perform the art of preservation. You see, arrived, we knew that our art was in great danger. So you know what we did? We took all the paintings that have human figures and we covered them up. In some cases, we put calligraphy on top. In some cases, we put scenes of nature. In some cases, we just covered them up with mud. And some we hid underground. They would come from time to time to check, but they never found out. Only one or two pieces they found. All the rest survived. Oh, those days were very terrible. Somehow we managed to stay here as long as we could, even though we got no salaries, even though it would get so cold in the winter with no heating. We would light small, small fire to keep warm. Finally, we had to give up. Some of us went into refuge, but some of us stayed here. I myself worked as taxi driver for a few years. But when we reopened the gallery, I came right back and all my team members came back to the job. And one by one, we uncovered the paintings and 
we put them back in the right order. This whole gallery was all destroyed. But look, we are rebuilding it. Even the peace garden outside, we made that so that we can remember how important is peace. You see, art is very important for a country. It is through the art of a country that you know the values, the history, and the nature of a people. God is very important for life. That's Namaste. Hello. I am Ashmina from Nepal. I am not an artist. I am an artivist. You see, when our civil war started, in the beginning, we artists were just lying on the sidelines. We said, what can we do? What difference can we make? But when I saw how this war was just terrorizing our own people, when I saw how the king's monarchy was getting more and more repressive, I said, we cannot just sit on the sidelines and do nothing. After all, our imagination is required for the people to bring about change. So, I called a meeting of all the artists I know, and we decided that we would join the Jan Andola. We would join the people's mobilization in the streets. So that is what we did. We all got together, all the religions, all the castes, all the times, and singing and dancing, performing and playing. That is how, marching in the streets and in the gardens, we brought down the monarchy and we negotiated a comprehensive peace to end our civil war. Hola, I am Anna. Me and my sister Vera, we created the Luyachikani Theater with our friends 30 years ago because we saw that in Peru this dirty war was destroying our people and our culture. Luyachikani is a Quechua word. It means I am thinking I am remembering. We use street theater with the traumatized women to help them to find and build their lives again. We use theater with our youth who have lost all meaning in life so they can learn to respect themselves and each other. We use street theater with our indigenous communities they can revive their traditions and their culture. You see, what we do on the theater is what we want in our society. Estamos luchando para crear una utopia para todos. We are working to create a utopia for everyone. You like My name is Vanilak. I was born in Batangbang province. I loved art from the time I was a little child. I would draw pictures in all my school books and my teachers would punish me. I started working as an artist, as a young man. I got married and we had a child. the Khmer Rouge and destroyed everything. On 
one day they arrested me. They put me in Tull's lane. You know, the torture camp has 21. I don't know why. I was not part of the regime. That is where they put the people who have defected to torture them to death. Normally, when they know you are an artist, they kill you immediately. But in my case, they said, oh, you are a good artist. You will paint pictures of our great leader, Pol Pot. So every day, I will paint pictures of our great leader. They said, if you don't paint it well, want people to never forget. I want people to remember. I want to make sure this never, never happens again. Hello, I'm Kimom from Cambodia. I was born in Dakhi province. You know, my family has preserved the tradition of Yeki opera for 2,000 years. You see, people in our country are very poor, so they learn about our history, our values, our culture through our opera. We were very popular. My father's troupe, all as nine brothers and sisters, we performed and went all around the country. And the Khmer Rouge regime killed my parents and all my brothers and sisters except one sister. When they asked me what I do, I didn't tell them I'm an artist because they would have killed me too. I never sang or danced in all those years. Then, five years ago, when I was 70, the director of the center came and said, you are Maestra Kimon. I said yes. They said, will you come and teach the children in our cultural center? Oh, I said, yes. Now, I am teaching all these young children. She's my granddaughter. She's very good. Now I know that Yeki Opera will not die when I die. You see, we are reviving the opera. We are also adapting it to the new times. We must learn to balance tradition and modernity because culture preserves us. If we preserve it and let it evolve, culture is so important to rebuild peace. Jean Bosco. I was 12 years old when the genocide started. 
that night. Our parents did not come home. I am the oldest, so it was my responsibility to take care of my brothers and sisters. I told them, we must go. We held hands, and we crossed the city. Already there were many checkpoints. The bodies were beginning to pile up everywhere. I don't know how. We got through all the checkpoints. They never asked us to take out our identity cards. There was just one place I could think of going. It was the house of one of my parents' friends. He was a Hutu. But I knew he was a kind man. He saw us standing there, holding hands. He just let us come into his house. Every day, more and more children like us would come and knock on his door. He never turned them away. We must have been more than 100 young people, all in this man's house. When they would come banging on the door, he would find a way to turn them away. Not one of us was killed. That is how we survived the genocide. The Hutus did many bad things to the Tutsis, but there were some just good men. After the genocide, I needed to find a way to take care of my brothers and sisters. I was good at painting, so I set up a little stand in the streets and I would draw pictures and portraits for the people in the UN and the NGOs who came after the genocide, many, many. Then one day I met Colin Sekajugo. He's an artist. He came back from Uganda after the genocide and he created this art studio. He found me and he said, come, come to Ivuka because in Ivuka we all work together like a family. We share our materials and help each other. So many of our artists have won big prizes and gone all around the world. We know one thing, we cannot without art and beauty. That's what we're doing. We're showing the world that Rwanda is not just killing and massacres. It's also art, beauty, and friendship. I am Edouard from Rwanda. I was eight years old when the genocide started. I was very sick, so my mother took me to the hospital. One evening, a man came into our room with a small baby in his hands. He asked if he could share our room. It was an empty bed. So my mother said, okay. But he didn't take the bed. He crawled under my bed with his baby and didn't say a word. In the middle of the night, five men came into our room with machetes. They started shouting, where is Francois? Where is Francois? We didn't say anything. They started threatening us. And finally the man came out from under my bed. And he said, I'm here. I'm here. They cut off his head. The baby started weeping. When she saw her father's head rolling away from the body. The men stared at the baby. No, I started shouting. My mother closed.
close my mouth. Otherwise they would think that we were Tutsis or Tutsi sympathizers and kill us too. None of our Tutsi friends and teachers were there. That night when I went back, I looked at all my neighbors. But I couldn't say a word to them. I went to my room. heard about me and he invited me at the National Day of Commemoration to read my poems in the stadium. I went there and when it was my turn to speak, I stood in front of all those thousands of people and I shared my whole story. Everyone stood up and clapped. That's why I keep writing. <coughs> to sow seeds of reconciliation. <coughs> We are the Bahari sisters from the Democratic Republic of Congo. We were just young girls when we were forced to flee our country when the flames of war made men act like beasts. Never thought to children young enough to be their daughters, to women old enough to be their mothers. For 10 years we lived as refugees in Uganda. We lost 10 years of our education, 10 years of our dreams, 10 years too afraid to move back, too afraid to move forward. All we had was each other and the songs that we wrote in secret and sang when we thought that no one could hear us. For we were too scared to sing aloud because our songs might fall in the wrong ears. Then our courage grew and we began to sing aloud and our songs grew wings of hope and spread across Africa to other countries torn by war like us. We sang for the seven million people killed in our country for no fault of their own. We sing for the 48 women who are raped every day in our country. We sing for people being killed everywhere in the world. We sing because we want violence to end. Vice President of the Syrian Coalition for Peace. I'm only 27, but I've been a political activist all my life. 
when I was in high school. My director tried to make me a member of the Bath Party. But I said, I won't join a party that oppresses its own people. When I was at university, they detained me ten times and interrogated me for hours. That didn't make me scared. After the first time, my courage grew. In university, we organized protests against this regime. Then, our peaceful revolution started all over the country. They arrested me two times. They tortured me. But we showed them that even in jail, you can imprison our bodies, but never our minds. We organized a revolution inside Holmes Jail. They surrounded the jail with tankers and snipers. We thought they would kill us all. But we showed them that even when we are your prisoners, we are free. I am so strong, though I'm small. They will never break me with their torture. But they broke my sister. After 65 days, they released her. But she's never recovered. Finally, we had to flee and become refugees in Turkey. But even here, we are working together. Day and night, we young people, because we know that the future belongs to us. You ask me whether I'm married. Well, actually, I got married six months ago. Okay, I'll tell you how it happened. We'd organized a meeting at the refugee camp. At the end of the meeting, I shared a poem my love. A man in our group looked surprised and he said, How do you know that poem? I said, It was written on the wall of my prison cell in Holmes. That's where I learned it. He looked horrified. He said, I wrote that poem. I put it on the wall of my prison in Holmes. Can you believe that? We had been prisoners in the same prison at different times. When he asked me to marry him, I said yes. Together, we will build a Syria of peace and freedom. We will bring the poesis of 